Hello and welcome back to another episode of Live here on Key Truck Medium. I am Josh Hayes here with Scott Manley, Chuck Moon, and Rachel Aukis. Uh, everybody in the live chat, welcome. Welcome to this great Monday morning. I am probably on a pot and a third of coffee right now. So if I'm like gonna die soon. zooming through my everything, that's why. That's why. And I have to have a I, I happen to have a, a cup. Right. That I'm not, still partaking of. Not apologetic at yeah. all. Yeah. Oh, see? See, I started a trend. I started a trend. Yeah, it's uh, like tea, if, not coffee. If you might be watching and are maybe in the market <laughs> for a... Uh, oh, I need to figure out how to do that. As, oh, we'll just leave that there. You don't need That's... to see Scott. <laughs> you really don't need to. Yeah, I don't need to. That That's perfect. Great today. I feel yeah. like I feel like what do you call it? The the mascot at a Kansas City Chiefs game or something? Uh, yeah. Oh, Kansas City Chiefs. Speaking of which, so I threw that in there. Just yeah, killed nice it little, yesterday. Nice little segue there on the uh, on the footballs. If you're watching, even if you're not a football fan, go and watch the last like, find the last two and a half minutes of that game. And watch it. And then you understand why I was super hyped last night and couldn't fall asleep for like an hour. Uh, speaking of coffee, keystrokemedium.com slash coffee. We have six blends right now. We're, we're trying to get K-Cups available. Um, you can get it uh, coarse. You can get it auto drip. You can get it French. Uh, what is it? The uh, French press. You can get whole mm -hmm. bean if you would like. There you go. Uh, it's a fantastic coffee. I prefer writer's block. And if you're watching right now, uh, we're going to try to do a giveaway this show, but I'm not really sure how we're going to do it. So I'm looking at the live chat right now, uh, and I'll just keep an eye on the live chat, and uh, I'll, I don't know, we'll, we'll figure something out. And Get I'll, some coffee. We'll, we'll give, we'll give a, a bag of coffee away this episode at some point in time. Uh, but that's a mystery known only to uh, Scott and no one else. Yeah. And uh, means yeah. There's no plan whatsoever. There's, there's no plan Obviously. whatsoever. It's like... uh, let's see. Uh, housekeeping really quick. Uh, key Coffee and Concepts, The Writer's Journey, Marathon Author, all had, uh, well, not The Writer's Journey, Marathon Author and Coffee, Coffee and Concepts all had new episodes last week. Go and check them out. Under the Iceberg, I think, returns this Saturday with Rick Partlow. You're not going to want to miss that. Live, I think it's 2 p.m. Central on Saturday. Uh, the flash fiction competition has received a metric boatload a of flash ton. Uh, a flash ton. Oh, I like that. Nice. That's pretty Flashes. good. Oh, That's pretty good. Oh, somebody write that down. Yeah. Uh, of entries, and our readers are plowing through them, and um, a lot of them are getting very high uh, scores. It's going to be really kind of tough to. Um, I mean, it's automatic. It it tells me the top three, but they're going to be super close the uh, the scoring so if you are still looking to get your uh entry in for that competition check out the rules on the facebook group keystroke medium on facebook and uh, send in your entry uh let's see weekly updates let's start with chuck this week because i like putting the intern on the spot Ooh. um usual stuff i'm working on jack dark book three uh i think I think book one is in edits with Athon now. I don't know if they ever actually convinced somebody to work on it or not. But um, I was having a conversation with Steve, and uh, I uh, we were talking about what I was going to do like next if I wanted to work with them again. And he recommended I do something spacey. So I've been working on some, uh, you know, starships and stuff. Some spacey things. But uh, I'm gonna kind of. I've got this idea for my own little take on the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, basically just space fantasy, but without it being D and D in space. So uh, I've been kind of working on little side world building stuff with that, and uh, writing a little short story just to flesh <clears throat> things out for me to get my mind off Jack for a little while. And you know how it is when you're with like, the same characters for you know, what's it been like 18 months now. So, uh, well, it's time well spent because I'm on chapter five, uh, I think, or six right now. I started it, uh, again last night after I finished cold as hell and I'm loving it. Loving it. Good. Glad you're enjoying it, man. If, but, uh, uh, if you guys want to hear Chuck, like tell a story, like reading a story and you're like, Oh, Chuck's telling me a story right now. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that the whole series is first person. And, uh, that's, that's phenomenal. 
Well, I'm glad you like it. That's anyway, fine. so I'm working on uh, maybe doing my own little spin on a on a big Star Wars saga type thing. And just doing the family thing on top of that. So that's about it. Very cool. Got COVID. You did? Oh, just throw it in there. Yeah. But my whole family did. Uh, my daughter ended up. Seems uh, like that should have been like like a priority of your update. Dude, I'm fully vaxxed and <laughs> I got the Omicron. It was like having a really bad sinus cold. I knew it wasn't going to be bad, but my son had it and we've got, because of what my wife does for a living, we've got a ton of uh, testing supplies here at the house. So nice. we just, you know, we've been doing our own testing and stuff and we're all getting over it. I mean, I, I was kind of crappy about three days last week, but other than that, yeah. it hadn't been bad. Um, but I've, you know, I've known some other folks that are, it's hitting them pretty hard, but, yep. yeah. but, uh, it's, it's still out there for sure. All my hospital friends are starting to bitch about it again because it's starting huh. to look like the cases are ramping up and it's starting to look like it did back at the beginning a little bit. So they're all freaking out. I guess the protocol is very time consuming. I was talking to somebody I know in security says that the intake, the treatment, and then the outtake is slow. And so it, Yep. Makes it, it backs everything up. Yep. Yeah. It's hard to get them in and out. And, you know, they can't go anywhere until they test negative. So you're just tying up these rooms and the hospital policies are a lot of them are, even if you're asymptomatic, if you get a positive test, you're stuck there. You can't leave, you know, unless you sign out AMA or something. Right. So a lot of people are, they feel better, but they've still got that little, you know, a little bit of protein in their, in their system that, makes that test pop positive and well, I'm glad you're doing you better. Go. Well, thank you. I am. I am. You might sound a little nasally, but that's about it really. What about you, uh, Scott? Scotty. Don't have, do, do not have uh, COVID. Forgot what it was Good. there for a second. Glad. You can see how white my mind is. <laughs> we started watching Ted Lasso. Finally, everybody says Ted Lasso is great. God, so, I, it. It is I know awesome. it's like, it's, and it was like a feel good thing. And so exactly. if you don't know about the moon household, my wife can't watch anything stressful or won't. And so I'm like, maybe this one will slip through. Cause normally we stop, like we try to watch game of Thrones and we weren't through the intro. She's like, nope. Oh, wow. sure. <laughs> she said, Nope. Uh, I'm done. You watch this on your own. So, but so we watched that. It was pretty good. But, um, Oh, the, what I, the reason I brought that up is because he tells the one guy, you know, about the memory of a goldfish being yeah. to be a goldfish, you know, so because he'd, he'd met, he'd failed at something. And then he says, you know, goldfish have short memories, be a goldfish and don't worry about it and move on. And so that's kind of how I must be about COVID because I literally forgot the name of that disease or whatever you call it. So, no, I don't have that. Um, <clears throat> very busy today. Other than that, lots of really important updates I don't normally have. We got the carpet clean, so my carpet's wet. I got a violin string fixed today. Um, I set up a ukulele lesson for my daughter, which apparently is a very popular instrument in which I could, I could, we couldn't hardly get in. Wow. Um, and uh, what else we do? I've been working on uh, the last Reaper 13, about ready to publish uh, Blue Sun Armada 3. So that's all done and at the formatter. Um, <clears throat> I submitted my application for a captain because they opened up the assessment, which is probably a horrible idea time-wise. I don't really know, but... Uh, it just depends. If you're not familiar with the ranking structure, it's that's a very. I never thought I could make it that high because in the past it's been very political. Unless you got like mentors and sponsorships, and it doesn't seem like it. But now it's like there's so many people gone right now. I think they might. I might be able to slip through the cracks. Um, well, I told you, you know, you just need to go into the captain's board, mm -hmm. look at everybody, and go, hey. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain That's now. It. And then you're yeah, going, I am the captain you're, you're looking for. Yeah. My grand plan would be to make captain and then like two weeks later go, hey, by the way, I resigned. I, I retired. Full time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the bars. I I retired just captain's point. pay. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. I don't think I would get it right that quickly, but uh, but anyway, so that's good. So busy at work, busy at home. Um, you know, I, I, I w was a wannabe musician and my oldest kids took music lessons and decided it wasn't for them. But my youngest two just decided, my youngest actually decided he wanted to take them. So I've been teaching him. He listens to my, my, my guitar lessons, which is surprising and practices all the time. And he says, I want to play the violin. And I'm like, no, you don't. That's a really hard instrument. But he kept at it. So we got him a violin yesterday, his first day, he's just sawing away. And it almost sounds like music. And we can actually make 
pretty less ear damaging sound, which amazed me. <laughs> and then <clears throat> he broke a violin string because he's going at it with that thing. And then uh, then he played the piano all day and sounded mm -hmm. actually his first, you know, never played before. And he's just kind of noodling around, making up melodies. And sounds like he's a natural so, man. So I'm at least for enthusiasm. So maybe I'll get some musicians in this <laughs> this family after all. So I'm pretty nice. happy about that. You know, and then wait till he finds drums. I know. Yeah. I said it's so we'll bring some drums. In. Try tuba. That's the, fun viol too. the violin is the violin is tough. I mean, anybody's ever had a violin player in their house? I dated a violinist yeah, back in the day, and she, yeah, that was that's not good for your mental. That's headspace. complicated, man. Well, it's it's yeah, it's a very loud instrument, and it does not sound good for probably the first five years, I imagine. So yeah, uh, so I may be writing when there's no musicking going on, but I'm very excited about it because I love music, and I'm happy that. Some other people in my family are into it now, too. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, Rachel, do you want to go next? And I'll take up the ear. You bet. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Flank. Josh, I don't know. Clean up Last. Any of those would have worked. But, <laughs> but you go with rear. <laughs> That's Sorry to make you only something so a Kansas jokes. City fan would do. Kansas wow! Yeah. It's the you know what they say what Count you can do with Josh 13 seconds. Awkward. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Welcome Woo! to the show. Hey, yeah. Rachel, you're not a rookie here anymore. I mean, That's you're in your family. Yes. Welcome to the party. Whew. All right. So, with that aside. <laughs> I had just turned in Waymaker Wars 2 to Athon. Um, and no one knows about Warmakers 1 because it's not published yet. That comes out, um, I think, in early May. Yay, pretty excited. Um, three book series. And so I'm getting started on Waymaker Wars book three um, next week. Because this week I've got two deadlines for short stories. One for a Chris Kennedy anthology and one for a, um, um, Steve Bowler anthology collection audio i don't really know what you're calling it because it's not quite an anthology it's going to be an story. Talk about steve there's always a pause like how do i say his name yes i've said it before. and i practice it over know, and over yeah it's Salugio. yeah <laughs> that's, that's, or baloo just baloo. Man, butcher it on purpose and have fun yeah. with it just yeah. call him steve jamie castle Jimmy Castle. Yeah. Steve, Jimmy Castle B. <laughs> there you go. That's what, yeah. From here on out, it's just Steve B. So sorry, Steve. There you go. So you're doing a whole trilogy. You're going to uh, rapid release because it's already completely done. Yeah. Some short stories. Yeah. Just like kind of the classic. Uh, oh, there baby. you go. Nice. Yeah. There's space junk. First, first book in the series. Sweet. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, if any of you have seen Harlock space pirate or red anime, yeah. or red manga. Okay. It, it has that feel of a story. Okay. So a little bit different than my usual space adventure type stories. Cause I've always been a big fan of the kind of pirates and, and Harlock. I always thought it was an awesome story. So yeah, I've watched that one on Netflix a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of the inspiration on, on taking a new angle with this one. And so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, uh, but I'm also, I'm finishing up. I've drafted a thriller that I'm posting on Wattpad right now. And, and then I've got to go through and polish it and figure out how to put it out in the world. And uh, that one will be fun. That one's about extinct animals being brought back to life. And we all know that that doesn't always go well. <laughs> That's always a great idea. What could yeah. go wrong? What yeah. Could Is saber tooth tiger wrong? in my backyard? Sure. Mm -hmm. they look Why so not? Funny. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to pet his belly. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, I got a game lit planned probably right after this. I've never written like lit RPG or game lit before, but I've had have an idea and just thought it'd be a blast to write. So, so what the heck? I'm really lousy at sticking to like a single genre. I, mm, yeah, I'm same. like worse than a pinball machine. I have that really same do. problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a couple so of I'm, side projects that. Yeah. 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 I'm fully I'm fully committed to to doing some thriller mystery stuff, but I think I'm going to do it under Chuck Manley instead of C. Stephen Manley, so I don't screw up all the machine stuff. Yeah, all the algorithms and whatnot. Yeah, I'm good at screwing that up. Cause, yeah, <laughs> it's all out there. It's all magic. Yes. Magic. Yeah, because I've got Post Apoc and I've got more space adventure. I'm 
talking with a couple of friends right now on doing a superhero series. Mm. So I got so, some yeah. of that in my head too. It's just, yeah, you All don't want what's inside my head. <laughs> that's yeah, true. so that's it. How about you, Josh? Uh, well, let's see. I fin- First of all, check this out. If I can make the... There it is, the Mad-Eye, Mad-Eye Haze. Oh, <laughs> I wondered what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Blade Runner each. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, really. Try with some new lighting, apparently, in the yeah. Haze studio. And yeah, some Scott- of it- Scott brought some new lights, and so um, they're they're kind of hot. Like I'm sweating. They're pretty bright. Yeah, Yeah. you have some. some It's an old man vest you're wearing. (sighs) Yeah, that's probably true. You should get a fishing vest and have like some lures. Oh yeah, and have like I've got one of those with all the pockets and stuff. The hooks sitting like yeah, Yeah. different lures and stuff. Yeah, get you a lid hat. Let's see. Uh, I finished the short story that I was working on with uh, Amy Duboff. It's the pair to hers. I uh, finished that this this morning. Came in a hair under 10,000 words, which is a monumental achievement for me in a Chris Kennedy anthology because uh, normally I run over. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of the running joke with any of my <laughs> submissions to CKP, I uh, yep. typically run over, but I was able to keep it under this time, which I was pretty proud of. Uh, so I said, you to should Amy pat to... yourself on the back. You really ideas. should. Good job, good job. I'm slightly wordy. If you guys don't know. <laughs> uh, so I finished that this morning and sent it off to Amy for her to read. And then uh, uh, I think maybe tomorrow or the next day, I'll give it another kind of pass uh, editing pass. <clears throat> go through it um scott every so often i think uh, you mentioned uh pro writing aid or grammarly or whichever yep. one i think i might run it through i know i have a membership to one of those and i don't i like remember pro writing aid better but um people choose different ones i also yeah. like i, I think I that's perfect the one i have. it i, use I like perfect it too i also yeah. use perfect it if i have time I for both right of those on. but perfect is more for consistency yeah it's yeah. like I noticed that sometimes you capitalize captain and sometimes you don't. And then, right. But it's really, it's really good. Yeah. That's that. I always run anything I'm done with through it before I send it off yeah. for editing like, or whatever. You, just to, yeah. Things you send you, things you italicize sometimes, but not, other right. times, which I do a lot with ship names and things like that. I'll forget. Or, mm-hmm. so. uh, let's see. So I finished that, sent that off uh, this week. I've, I've crossed 57,000 words on weaponized and um, cruising right along with that. I, uh, Steve and I were talking uh, earlier this weekend about, or last weekend rather, about um, growing as authors and going from I can't write anything longer than 50,000 or I don't know how I'm ever going to write a 100,000 word book to planning out a hundred thousand word book and then writing like 120,000, which is like, I'm getting to like points in the outline that I've outlined that I, I thought that I was going to be at this point. And I kind of like estimate, you know, you know, you estimate 2000 words per chapter. So by the time you get to chapter 30, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm rolling really good. And then by the time I get there, I've added like seven chapters because I was needing extra stuff here and extra stuff there. And yeah. (laughs) Uh, I'm tend to be an adder in when I edit because yeah. I'm like this needs a little more, make it more visual, or I need to clarify, or I can right. spend more time on this action sequence. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the opposite uh, of Josh. I write yeah. slow, short, and it's, yeah, all dialogue. A lot. See, I, I do a lot of dialogue, um, and I, I, that's actually one of my favorite things is dialogue. I love dialogue. But a lot of times I'll get to like in the plot of the story and and realize. I need this to happen, but I can't do that without layering in this or that over here. Right. And, mm-hmm. and so I inevitably have to add chapters and I, I know it's that way. And that's why, like when I, when I, when I plot out and I'm like, this is only 40 chapters, it's only going to be 80,000 words. And I'm like, no, cause I know the type of writer that I am. Some of those the time I'm gonna done, be there's going to be more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I made, um a crap ton of progress on my epic fantasy story this week uh that i've been kind of messing with the lore and the magic system and plotting out and i've i've had kind of a hang up on it it's actually becoming like my next valor-esque type of project because uh if anybody remembers me talking about valor back when i was writing the first book that book took me like six years 
to write and finish. And I went through like five different <clears throat> drafts and outlines and now it's a meme and I talk about it all the time. This book, this fantasy series I've been working on, I'm, I've been working on it in some form or another for about three years now. And probably by the, yes, exactly. See, uh, probably by the time <laughs> I, I f- finish it, it's going to be like six or seven years. And, um, but I had a, I've been having issues with the lore and uh, how the magic system kind of affects the world and that kind of thing. And, and I had a really long conversation with uh, another fantasy uh, reader and author, Blake Peel, who's a uh, friend of the show. We had him on uh, last week or the week before mm-hmm. recently. And he helped me out a lot and I was able to fix some of the stuff that was broken and uh, come up with some fresh ideas that come kind of like, just start the thinking process going in a different direction, which makes other things happen. And it just kind of starts clicking and, and making a lot more sense. And uh, so yeah, drafts of valor. Exactly. Uh, So that was good. Um, And I started working on an expanded uh, synopsis slash outline to submit. Uh, Hopefully in a few weeks, I can get that wrapped up. Um, and, uh, this morning started another chapter for tranquility three, uh, and, uh, did about 400 words. I've been doing a, a lot of, uh, it's called free association is not the right word, but free writing, uh, starting chapters where I, I, I have an outline for the chapter, but I'm not quite sure how I want to present it or where I want to start. Kind and of instead of just consciousness stuff. Yeah. It, well, taking the bits that I have in the outline and then expanding on them without any format or structure going like, I need to do this for the scene and just kind of free writing out the idea and figuring it out in my head and word vomit. Exactly. 100%. And so I I spent uh, uh, probably about an hour, 45 minutes this morning, uh, roughing out that chapter and probably this afternoon I'll start kind of drafting it a little bit better. Uh, and then I got a really inspiring message on Facebook this morning, and I'm not going to read. I'm not going to tell you who sent it because I, I don't want to embarrass them if they're worried about that. Uh, but I'm going to read it because it. Uh, I thought it was really interesting, and this sometimes I I am hesitant about sharing um, my own personal experiences, especially. Uh, on the negative side of doing different things. And uh, um, then I got this message and it completely just reaffirmed why I did it, that we were on um, under the iceberg and we were talking about the different things. And I mentioned how I'd kind of fell out of love of writing over the last couple of years. And uh, this morning uh, on my Facebook, I got this message, Josh, I'm a long time listener to your podcast. I just wanted to reach out and say your story during the under the iceberg session, re how you kind of fell out of love uh, loving to write really resonated with me. It helped immensely to see someone else who has had some success in this circus going through the same thing I had or still am and haven't uh, decided yet. At any rate, you guys are, uh, have a great show. Thank you. Uh, I thought that was really cool. And uh, I, I always appreciate getting messages like that, but it just kind of uh, reinforces the, the need and uh, the desire to keep doing what we're doing here and it's kind of the whole yeah. point of the show really you get exactly. reaching other yeah. authors and and helping other other people get uh out of their own way basically let them know they're not alone right one thing we did forget to do right at the beginning of the show is give trucker charlie d and this is the this this was a a heated debate before we went live. Dude, uh, I will screenshot it and show because you. on my end I show Trucker Charlie <clears throat> D as the first comment of the day, but on everybody else's and on the YouTube feed, it shows Thomas, Thomas Hoddle. Hoddle. As the first. Feels DM like some kind of conspiracy. So well, let me I, get this straight: you're going to give it democracy to Trucker Charlie, is dead. even <laughs> though all three of us see it. And Not a democracy here. Listen, it. I am the supreme overlord boss of Keystroke Media, and you I are make the, the SOB, no doubt about it. Yeah. And, He's all full of all uppity from that. KC and today, Keystroke. I give it to Trucker Charlie D driving Sorry, through Thomas. Georgia. He gets the this is secretly for also for Thomas of appreciation for the first comment of the day. Uh, sorry, Tom. 
better better luck better luck next time hopefully the uh the youtube algorithm doesn't screw you out of it next time um let's see we're going to talk about some writing habits today we're also going to talk about uh wattpad later on um you you talk just briefly a little bit about your waymaker uh series um do you want to talk about kind of where the inspiration came from that and a little bit more on the story and then we can re- go into like what your writing is like uh here this year and and what it's been over the the course of the last couple of years with all the craziness going on Sure. Okay. So, so I've been doing a lot with Athon over the last couple of years because I like their approach and I like how they uh, kind of the three book series and and they do some longer series and things, but but they just have a, a really good strategy set up for releasing books. And so um, I've done a few. I just finished doing a co-writing series with Jamie McFarland, um, and that just finished coming out. The last book came out like two weeks ago or so. Um, but we had a great time. Did we lose Josh? No, I think he's hiding from us. He oh. kicked himself out. Back. His, yeah. Back. Kicked oh, himself he's out for his, his nose. I probably had to blow his nose or something. Yeah, that's probably what it was. <laughs> I know I hit the wrong button on my mouse and it hit the back. Button. Sure you did. It's okay. uh, yeah, you were you were sure. completely naked. This Wanna just... clean out your mustache there, buddy. <laughs> he was trying on different vests. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. This one looks yeah. just like the last one. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Next week's gonna be the YMCA vest. Yeah. The leather that's one. Yeah, I'm gonna get yeah. an Indian headdress too. One of those orange safety vests. That'd yes. be good. Yes. Best of valor. Sorry, I interrupted. Could continue. <laughs> Best of valor. Uh, it's okay. It's all about you, Josh. <laughs> That's true. He is the I SOB. But he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about uh, your three books with with the eighth on and their launch strategy and so on. So yeah, on. yeah. Thanks, because my brain would have gone already <laughs> onto some other tangent. It's a squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Hitting Waymaker squirrel. Wars, Space Junk. Um, I think I mentioned earlier is kind of based off with Harlock Space Pirate. I've done a lot of, I've done several space adventure series now. And, um, it's, and I have a blast with them, but almost all of them have had like military elements. And this is the first book that there's really no real military in it. It's kind of the, the way the, the world has evolved, or I should say solar system, because mm-hmm. um, humans have expanded. It's really more, um, of just a very bureaucratic society that has AI controlling and helping us on almost every, everything imaginable in life. And, uh, and that, sh- and it shows that it's both good and bad. And, uh, and so the series kind of uh, picks up there. Um, and then of course it has to add some aliens and True. because every good, good space adventure has to have a hint of an alien somewhere. Yeah. Something yeah, yeah. So that's how uh, Space Junk was born. And then Freezer Burn, I just handed off. And then I start next week on Malfunction Junction. And that will likely wrap Love up the series. Titles. Best titles. Yeah, I had those fun with good it. Titles. You and Chuck are our title masters. So we, we still like uh, <laughs> Murder Cl- Galactic Murder Clowns 3 is still. <laughs> <laughs> that I is am true. particularly proud of that one, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> That one is that could be awesome. a flash just, picture. Just the like, looks I get when people hear it, they're like, What? Yeah. <laughs> and stuff. Oh shoot. So we're so, talking yeah. about some talk about some process things and kind of how we're getting cons- I think we were talking about doing consistency and how to get things rolling. Cause I I've had my issues I can talk about with where I'm usually uh kind of draconian about my writing discipline and stuff, but I I, I have my own problems with some video games which this morning when i woke up <laughs> i got up at 4 45 to write before everybody woke up and then it was like 7 15 and i finally messaged josh and it says i've been up since 4 45 and i haven't done anything and then basically said this game and it, it it requires daily logins to get rewards and so long story short um, i was able to delete it off of all three platforms that i played on so like well done well done yeah. so that's good scott's no longer doing pokemon keep that up keep yeah that up yeah for, oh, keep that up for 30 days and i'll send you a chip there you go yeah, yeah. that's right yeah. exactly my name is scott moon and i play rage shadow legend <laughs> yeah and i'm a yeah. video game addict yeah it's ridiculous <laughs> it's you know if you want to learn about how to like just fleece somebody of their money with gambling gambling like algorithms then that's a good good case study that that's all we're here for freaking lootly man yeah but so i uh, yeah, I kind of butted yeah. in there. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. So, what's yeah. a typical work day look like for you, Rachel? 
you know, so I quit my day job almost four years ago now, I think about three and a half years ago. And, uh, and when I first started working full-time as a writer, I had these great ideas that, oh my God, I'm going to write a book every like three weeks. And, <laughs> you know, life's going to be great. And I think my productivity actually went down from when mm. I had my day job. And, and it was funny because my day job was busy. I, I traveled full-time, uh, you know, I was always at airports and things. And, uh, and so I was always just writing whenever I could or in hotel rooms and whatnot. And so I thought, oh man, it, it's got to be 10 times better. And no, no, I is amazing. All the different distractions I could find. And it's I, interesting because I'm looking to make the jump as soon as possible, but that is a very common theme. Almost everybody I know who has made the transition has faced that challenge. Yeah. Yeah, the honeydew list grows. It's like yeah. all of a sudden, every day, I think I had a list sitting on the table for me of, of different things to look into and do. And and yeah, so there is setting expectations too, because it was also one of those things that, oh, if you're writing full time, then you now have your weekends and your nights to right. you know, do other family stuff. And mm -hmm. so there is setting expectations was a big, big <clears throat> challenge there. Um, and then well, setting just setting rules too, for me. Because what, Josh? Setting schedules too, because like, yeah. like you get that while you're home and you can do this, or well, you can write anytime, so you can do this now. And That's the one I get a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm fully committed to ignoring my family, just like I do when I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. yeah, I've actually been trying to do more of that as well, trying to find that that work life balance. Yeah, it I is a challenge. Yeah. yeah. It is tough. So, so I set my alarm every single day. I get up, I try to be at my desk no later than six. Um, I'm more of a morning person. I, I crash pretty early at night. And, and so, yeah, I, every day I try to be up at minimum by five o'clock and usually my dog does a good job at helping me if I try to snooze. So, so but no, the things I've had to change, um, cause I do get so easily distracted is I had to start turning off the internet. Uh, I, I've tried to I'm, I'm still getting better at it, but I, I try to, I have three rules. One is to write before I do anything else. Um, I mean, I not breakfast and all that. Cause that stuff everyone knows is the most important thing of the day. Group, breakfast, but, group, and coffee. Yeah, but write without checking email or social media or, or things like that. And I've had to physically turn off my Wi-Fi to keep from getting so distracted. And, uh, and so, yes, try to write before anything else and then try to, you know, not check anything until at least lunchtime. Um, and then, yeah, my second rule was to do right without the internet. And, uh, and then third rule, which I guess kind of belongs at the very beginning was to start outlining. So Josh was kind uh, of talking about some of the pants scene vomiting he was doing, but, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, I've always done such high level outlines. I, I mean, when I write a book, I'll go in and do a storyboard of maybe a page, page and a half before I dig in. Um, and then I'm just going. And, yeah. uh, and I realize now if I kind of put out a little bit on each chapter before I start it, you know, maybe, you know, good 20 bullet points or so I, that chapter goes a lot faster. Yeah. 20 yeah bullet as, I think as long as you know what you're writing towards, it's always going to be more productive. You know, if you sit down and you have no idea and you just start throwing stuff out there, you might get some words down, but I think, a lot of times, unless you're just a natural born pantser, I think a lot of times you end up cutting a lot of it out and trying, you know, to get to the important stuff that, that you wanted to write in the first place. Whereas if you have those targets in mind, you know, you can get there a lot more efficiently. Yeah. 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 And I'm the opposite of so many writers that they write long because I really write short. So my bigger challenge yeah. is to flush things out and, and add more details into the you know, give, give us some go. deep POV in that. In a lot of ways, I think that's kind of better uh, efficiency wise. I think writing short is probably better than Just, writing long. Yeah, it depends. I either, I, either, I either go sh way short or way long. It just depends. I can never come in. Then I have to like, so I usually wind up re-outlining at least sometimes the last half of the book and sometimes just like the last few chapters because I realize that okay, I have outlined 11 more chapters. I only have 10,000 words left in the book. That's way too, too much. And so I have to basically change my outline and figure out what is the right ending for this and how to, how to kind of, and sometimes that means going back and shifting some of the plot points into different parts so that they kind of the midpoint and, and the first 
door or whatever is in the right place. Um, yeah. So I, I have a very complex and inconsistent relationship with plotting. Sometimes I plot a lot. <laughs> sometimes I plot not at all. I'm always mad about the plotting, no matter how much I do. I'm like, and my biggest thing is that I will following my outline. I'll be like, I'll get to a point that is really good. I'm like, Oh shit, I already did that two chapters ago. Cause it came up. I'm like, now I got a re outline. So that's my one thing. of the things that I'm coming up against in my outline for weaponized is I, I outlined it in plotter um, and sat for like a day and kind of worked through the outline. But a lot of the things that I came up with story idea wise or uh, planning plot wise uh, didn't mesh up with how the story ended up coming out on the page. And so a lot of those things I'm having to either move around or just completely get rid of uh, because this, this particular project, like most projects that I outline, I usually outline for months at a time before I actually start writing them. Uh, and Not minutes, I give it minutes. No, no months. Uh, because usually I'll outline Days. like as I'll outline like for instance my fantasy project. I won't start probably writing that until after the summertime probably. But I'm outlining it and planning it now, and that way when I sit down i have it all in my head weaponized i i don't say that i came up with it on the fly but it was it, the the base idea wasn't super complicated and so i just sat down and kind of worked out what i needed to do with the first book and and now that i'm going through and i'm kind of getting to know the, the characters i'm like you, you were talking about fleshing out rachel I, I i came up with wanting to have like bots uh in my in my book and then ha like I needed to add security systems and stuff that I hadn't thought about. Um, and so I had to go back and add all that stuff in. And that is adding significant uh, words to the manuscript, adding all that up. Good. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I jot down so many ideas before I ever start a project. I, I use OneNote for all of my planning and notes and outlines and character bios and and oh my gosh I've got at least 20 projects out there that I've got little premises and <laughs> character notes and various little things posted and yeah. yeah a lot of projects out there a lot of people have talked about OneNote but I don't know that I've actually ever looked at it I use the uh the iPhone notes app but it's not super like user-friendly like I'll go through and I'll write a whole bunch of notes down on whatever ideas, but it's not very uh, intuitive. Did you say, is it one note? Did you use that yeah. for work or before you started or for some reason? Because I can never, I always try it and then I get, then I, I'll try it like every month and a half or three or four months. And then I'm like, I, cause everybody's like, that's a great idea. But then I never can make it. Yeah, I, yeah, I did. I use Microsoft Office for work, and yeah. uh, and so yeah, OneNote I was familiar with ahead of time, and yeah. yeah, and yeah, I've got little templates set up, and I how I set up every notebook and project. That's yeah, I've got a whole little yeah, that would be awesome style to it. I had to just I do post everything screenshots. in Scrivener, and and I've started using Plotter, but <laughs> like all of my all of my pre writing notes, everything I have in in, in one Scrivener file. And then I just compile the actual story part of it when I'm done with it. But that, I just I like that. having, I like having everything in one place, you know, yeah. just open one file and there's, you know, I can bounce around in the notes and do whatever I need to do. That yeah, is I the love neat how thing writers have different, different oh, yeah. processes. Or one way to skin a cat. I'm going to have to check out no, uh, to say. one note. <laughs> I just op I'd never opened it on my computer until you mentioned well, it. Just cause, Cause Josh, you were talking to me about using um, word and one drive or something the other last week. Or yeah. Something. Well, I was, when I'm drafting in tranquility and wow. in writing short stories, I use word because we, wow. we drop the shared chapters into Google drive. So I just do the writing on word and drop the word doc in per chapter and so i i save it all on the one drive and i don't have any issues going back and forth between like computer or ipad or computer or anything like that i'm, assuming, I'm assuming one note would be very compatible with yeah. that type of process yep i don't run into any problems synchronizing and i use word with one drive so you get up early in the morning and and work and get all that done do you have like a i, I know in the uh, in the 
in the Keystro Rimo, you're at uh, 55,000 words, almost 56,000 words for the month with a goal of 80,000. And you average between 2,500 and, you know, sometimes up to 6,000. Uh, what's your goal for every day when you're logging? You know, I don't set word count goals by the day. Maybe I would. Maybe I'd be more regular if I did that. It makes me sound like I need fiber. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's all dietary. No. Writing is all dietary. It's all it is. dietary. Yeah. Um, no, I usually set goals more on scenes or chapters saying I've got to get, you know, these pieces done. You know, I want to work through these bullets today or these two or three scenes and and those kind of things. So that's how I set each day ahead. I kind of know. I also have a spreadsheet that is probably overly complicated that if anyone looked at it, they'd be like, oh, she's insane. Um, I have one but what it, ha it has dates for everything. And it'll auto calculate dates based on how many days I, you know, if I've got a deadline, I'll have it auto calculate dates that when I have to have it polished and drafted and i'm planned. really curious to see what this outline it's is. so it's sad uh, see, you said like... the magic word you said spreadsheet oh and see he's got the got junkie ears for spreadsheets. Up. i love spreadsheets but <laughs> yeah but i'm the overly I'm, complicated ones i'm always excited to look i'm not I... my thing is i'm not good at spreadsheets but like <laughs> uh last year i was like i'm just using the one spreadsheet for the whole year but then i'm like well it'll be better if i tweaked it and so I like just copy it in, you know, I'll, I'll use Google Sheets and I'll be like, duplicate it. And then I'll make my modifications while well, I'm sitting there looking at it last year, like around, let's say October. And I'm and I do a new one. I'm like, and it's version 156. I have 156 <laughs> versions of this spreadsheet. I'm like, probably something I could be doing more efficiently with this process. <laughs> I have tried so hard, but I just can't make myself care about them. I just can't. I don't know why. It's, it's, I even learned to make one so I could keep up with my word counts and try and be part of the yep. of the of the group with the word counts and but as long as I work every day, I don't give a yeah. damn. I mean I, I do the best I can and I get on with my life. I'm ninety nine percent <laughs> sure it's the resistance that Stephen Pressfield talks about. It's just it feels important. And so I can go in there and fiddle with my writing spreadsheet for like six hours. And I could have been writing the whole time, but instead, right. I'm like, oh, I did a lot of work today on my writing on my writing it craft. Is. Yeah, yeah, exactly it makes you feel productive at procrastinating. Yep. Yeah, same same thing with doing social media stuff and all kinds of things. Like I'm Video really games. building. I'm well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although you yeah. can, I did. There was a there was a moment because it, the game that game is a little bit of an uh, our uh, role playing game, sort of has elements. I'm like, I could I could do a lit RPG. This is research. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's not. Research Hell for yeah. gambling is what it is. I need to read one of those just to see what they're about. I, I, I'm i afraid. Let's read one. So probably just stay good away one. from anything with the word harem attached to it. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned earlier uh, about Wattpad, and, and there was uh, uh, it really sparked my attention because earlier in another <clears> Facebook <throat> group, there was some, some hubbub about Wattpad and you know, piracy and different things. And, and, and my assertion was to myself that piracy is going to happen, whether you're on a certain platform or not. And uh, I don't even worry about piracy really anymore. It's, it's going to happen. And those people right. aren't your audience. They're not going to buy your book anyway. And the people that are pirating books are not going to buy your book. No, but um, hopefully their friends do. Yeah, they, exactly, they, exactly hey, right. Check out this book. This is awesome. Well, well, I remember. Um, so you use Wattpad, and you you have been using it for a while. I think you were like one of the original, or not very original, but very early adopter of the platform. And yeah. so, kind of talk a little bit about what you do there. Okay. Yeah, I've been on Wattpad for probably oh close to ten years now. So yeah, I have been on there a long time. Um, back when I first started self-publishing. So before I self-published, I did put out five books through traditional houses, but, um, well, they bombed. And so I went to self-publishing <laughs> and, uh, and so I tried Wattpad at a time. Cause at that time, you know, this, we're talking at 2012 or so 2013. Um, it was a free for all is wild west anywhere in the world. Right. So oh, I was, yeah. mm -hmm. I was just throwing spit wads everywhere, seeing what would stick. And, yep. uh, so yeah, same time I saw publishing, I was throwing stuff up on Wattpad and, um, 
and it's grown a ton. Wattpad now puts out movies, they publish, you wow. name it. It's harder for someone who's just getting started on Wattpad now to get traction. I mean, it's it would be a crapshoot. It definitely would be tougher. Mm -hmm. um, their demographic is 14-year-old female, um, international. So, so just write what Josh should write. Yeah. 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 Josh's yeah. market. Wait Absolutely. a minute now. 14-year-olds of valor. Yeah, <laughs> fan fiction. That's... There you dude, go, dude, turn look over your right shoulder at the at the dolls, dolls. and D that should tell you action figure collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> so Wattpad now is different than ten years ago. They by just Chuck. booted Chuck out, Denny. <laughs> he didn't know he's just every looking show. around. He doesn't even pay attention. He's just la 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 la. <laughs> oh shoot! So yeah, back to Wattpad. It. Uh, yeah, it did well by me. So you don't, um, you get monetized through it through different ways. Um, you know, through advertising. I used to, since I was, my, let me, blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> my Deadland books, my post-apocalyptic zombies was a hit there. Um, and I think I'm up to like 8 million reads now or so. So they've done pretty good. That's and awesome. um and so once they hit a few million reads, I became what they call a Wattpad star. And they assigned me a talent manager. And at that point, I started making money off whenever people read my stories through the advertising dollars. Um, they, it also got me a contract on a couple of anthologies that they had worked in the works of um, doing like through Simon & Schuster. So it was great at, you know, getting exposure to different different markets and those kind of things and making a little bit of extra money on the side. Um, but it's also fun to test the water. So I'll write uh, like a short story or something of some genre I, I want to do. For example, I'm doing a superhero fiction on Wattpad and just to test it, see if, you know, I would get bored with it or if people would enjoy it. And, uh, and, and it's doing OK there. I mean, I've kind of let them sit there a long time. But but, you know, it's one of those things that I'm like, oh, OK, I think I'll go ahead and probably write the full book and, and then publish it. So Wattpad to me is kind of a testing ground now and and putting opportunities out there. So my thriller that I wrote. So I've never written an action thriller before. Um, I post it out there. Uh, my talent manager will see if there's a fit for it in any of like their studios market. So they do um, they do movies and streaming shows with like Netflix and Paramount Plus and some of the different yeah. a lot of different international ones, too. Um, and then they also look at from a publishing route, but they don't do that as much anymore. So um, hearing hearing you describe Wattpad. To me, I've never been on it or used it or, you know, I, I had a vague idea what it was. Um, it sounds great, but I know that a lot of people are kind of hypercritical of it. So what what's yeah. the what's the problem with it? What, what do people not like about it? Um, you hear people complaining about um, the piracy, but I'm 100 percent with Josh. I think piracy is everywhere. Yeah. I mean, unless someone's pirating your book and selling it on Amazon, there that's right. a different ballgame. Right. But but I'm one of those. I just believe piracy is a way of life. It's just part of our, if you're going to yeah. be a professional it's writer, always, you're going to it's find gonna happen. out there. It's a punch yeah. in the gut when you find out it's happening, but you know, be a goldfish, move on. I mean, it's so brazen that they do it on the platform that like specifically hunts out all like people take <clears throat> audiobooks and put them on YouTube and YouTube's biggest thing is cutting down copy strikes and piracy notices and like they don't even care they just the one i like there. is is devin c ford had people come on his writer fan page on facebook oh yeah and, this, and say well right. i didn't really like to pay for this so this is where i got all of the free audiobooks i didn't pay for any of them and it's like yeah. bragging about it on his fan page with his fans and i'm like you're just gonna just hey by the way i pirated your book f you yeah why why yeah. <laughs> like wow yeah, I think yeah. the ones who pirate don't see anything wrong with it because I've seen those comments too, especially on Wattpad. They'll post it and be like, "Oh, well, I can find your books here," or so on. And I'm like, ah. "I'm like, come on, I'm giving you it for free on Wattpad." Right. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to go pirate it anywhere. I free somewhere I'm, I'm like putting up a free copy for you, and and it's probably limited time. Um, so some of my books on Wattpad are also published, and that's walking a a fine line because Amazon's terms of service requires it um you know for pricing and everything so the digitally. copies i have on wattpad are not the original the published versions they're rough drafts with all the typos and 
not polished. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Different variations. Amazon at any day could crack down and say, you can't have any, any other version. You cannot have rough drafts available. And, uh, see, I, really I, I already thought that's the way it was. I didn't realize you could have rough drafts out there. I thought you had to have every, you know, as scrubbed clean as possible from the rest of the world. Yeah. Are, are you uh, all in with Amazon or do you go wide? All in mostly. I have uh, some nonfiction books that are wide. Um, and then a couple other books that have just never do done great on Amazon. So what the heck? They're wide. Yeah, did the same yeah. thing. I, my older books, I just put wide just because why not? Yeah. Or because if I wanted to use them for a reader magnet or something, I could. Yeah. On the older stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I could see. And Wattpad, its demographic definitely has changed. If you write romance and fan fiction and that kind of stuff, you'll do great on Wattpad. If you write lit rpg or game lit then go to royal road because that's just a different version out there mm, right there's you know there's different postings out there and it is harder to get traction on wattpad now unless you write romance. what was the new amazon short Vela. thing i was just about Vela. to ask Rachel i had heard that, that depended on genre as to whether it was worth anything yeah. i haven't yeah, seen you've done so much Vela. on wattpad have you tried Vela? No. have you done anything i with didn't that? just because i was so all in on Wattpad already, right. but it is it's serialization. There's so many different serialization sites out there. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I haven't have heard not anybody say really anything great about uh, Vela. Yeah. Like it, I, it, you normally, if something like that comes out, if it's doing well, there's a lot of people talking about it. Yeah. Excitement. Yeah, because yeah. it sort of launched, and then I just, it was like, you know, tumbleweeds. I didn't hear anything else about it. You know, nobody nobody talking it up or anything. Well, Thomas said that he has a friend that works for the Vela program. He says, uh, says sci-fi is a, the sweet spot for really? Vela. Did not wow, know that. So I had heard the exact opposite, but not from an there. informed source. Interesting. Yeah. But as a consumer, I don't see Vela on the Amazon page when I go out there. You know, it's not something they don't do a good job at promoting it. Yeah. It's yeah. like a redheaded stepchild for them. <laughs> Walt Real Billard says Eric Henson is on chapter 21 of his Vela service. Interesting. Nice. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So maybe I'll try Vela. It's Who knows? And so your work in progress now, do you, you, you say you have a, a thriller that you're doing like a chapter. Do you have a, a is the book done? Do you just put it up a chapter a week or how do, how do you, you do the distribution yeah. for that. Yeah, my thriller, uh, The Lazarus Key is what I'm calling it. It's got um, it's 78 chapters, I think. And I'm posting a minimum one chapter per day on Wattpad. Okay. So okay. it's rough drafted. Um, it definitely needs polish. I've got like a whole list of things I want to change to the, the manuscript before I, it's ready to go. But <laughs> I'm putting the rough draft up on Wattpad. And then once it's ready for publishing, I'll probably pull it off Wattpad. So I'm just using it for Wattpad for early feedback and to see yeah. if there's interest in it. What is the Same feedback numbers. like? Um, pretty good. It's, you know, as services go, I got to admit, Wattpad is so much nicer than like an Amazon review or anything oh, good like reads. that. Goodreads. Yeah, much, Ooh, much good less reads. toxic Ooh. than Goodreads. It's, yeah, people are pretty nice on Wattpad. And as the writer, you can, of course, delete any comments you want and report them oh, if they're nice. offensive and but yeah people are generally really good and then they'll or they'll what i like about it and what i use it for too is um they'll post comments or questions saying well i don't understand this or you know why didn't they do this and so it gives me ideas of how i could add into the story and everything but yeah, yeah no, some people sure. write directly to wattpad just post it as they write it but uh, my first, yeah, I got to at least get a first <laughs> right. draft done before right. I do that. My you name is going to be on that. It better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, mean, I got to clean it up a little bit at least. <laughs> One of my early adventures was I uh, picked up a book called How to Blog How to Blog a Book or something. Yeah, I got that one. Yeah, and so I I did a blog a novel, and I did it for a while. But like like usual, I had nine different projects at the same time. It was really hard to keep up. I worried about copyright a little bit and I was having to make my own book covers because you couldn't afford to just be cranking, buying book covers every, every week for each chapter. So I did that for a while. It was a lot of fun, but it, it didn't, it never went anywhere. But that's kind of reminds me of a serialization where you're writing it as you go rather than finishing it and then 
distributed it that way would probably be a little less stressful. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it seems to me it would be kind of like writing a TV show, you know, like every, every installment in Vela would be like a, like an episode with one big overarching plot line for the whole season kind of thing. And you could just sort of isolate those, those chunks of plot and, and make them like little episodes of, you know, Buffy or whatever, where they've got their little story, but the big overarching story for the entire thing. So I don't you know. Make it like I'm Boba intrigued Fett by the Mandalorian, idea. Mandalorian, which are the exact same thing. Yeah. Quality wise. Yeah, yeah. Chuck, you kind of nailed it. That serialization to do it properly. Yeah. You have to treat it episodic where like yeah. throwing these chapters up is more for feedback. They're not truly serialized. They're just getting posted in a right. serialized I'm fashion. I'm kind of intrigued by that idea. I've never Interactive like that. beta group or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, because I don't use beta readers, and so it works out pretty slick for me. Do you do that with all your books or just uh, certain books? Just certain ones that I haven't contracted. So, like, none of my Athon books have gone up on um, on Wattpad. Um, although I'm I'm sure if I talk to the guys, they'd be like, oh, yeah, you could try it or something. But, uh, but yeah, I usually just do it with new projects or ones that I know I'm self-publishing. So do you have a, have, have you, you must have an established following on Wattpad then, because if the demographic for Wattpad is 14 year old international girls, I mean, I, I, are, is that who's reading your stuff on Wattpad and giving you all this good feedback? Um, not so much. My demographic doesn't fit with the Wattpad um, demographic, which, you know, that's a great segue into one thing I like about Wattpad is it has awesome reporting um, that you can really split down. If you post a story, really? it'll give you the exact demographic of what's reading really? the story. So it'll hmm. tell you the age, um, gender, the their locations, like which countries are reading it. Uh, my zombie books have been a huge hit in the Philippines. Who knew? Wow. If uh, yeah. if you're curious, I put the link to Rachel's uh, Wattpad account on uh, in our chat. You can go check it out. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Fun. And if anyone wants to try Wattpad or something, just reach out to me or I can show you the demographics too of, you know, like screenshots. I'm going to have to look into that. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is one of the nice perks of if you're going to post something on Wattpad is just seeing the demographics. Pretty sure. Because yeah, most of my science fiction is um it's like 30 some year old male readers. Interesting. Galactic murder clown sounds like it should do <laughs> being serialized a little uh, bit further. That's, yeah. take, that's, take a it freebie, that's a freebie on the website now. <laughs> <laughs> About to be a Wattpad phenom. <laughs> and so you, you have Waymaker Wars coming out. Um yeah. and uh do you have any more collabs scheduled for this year? What's look what's the the, the 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 over the horizon stuff looking for you like you know i haven't contracted any other projects but i'm in the talks on a few different projects so jamie and i are definitely talking about doing potentially another series um because we had a lot of fun writing our last one and uh and i'm talking to a couple other friends but we haven't signed anything and and uh set things down so yeah no contract so it, it's kind of fun um, cause now I get to write whatever I want. But yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'll do the game lit one next. Cause I know that that one, you know, that I'll have a good home where I can send that. And so we had Blake Peel on yeah. a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about game lit and how, what was the other term he used? His, his particular version of game lit was different from lit RPG. Right. And his game lit wasn't. Uh, stat driven or <clears throat> something like that. What, so talk a little bit yeah. about your, we've got a couple of minutes left and I'm curious about your okay. take on game lit. Yeah. So game lit versus lit RPG is similar. I mean, game lit, you, you know, it's what it says is literature that is about, you know, it's some way related to a game. And I know someone, someone who's written longer in the genre can define this a whole lot better than me. Lip RPG is what's going to have the stats and all of that in there. It, it is treating you as you are going into the game, you're leveling up or your main character is whatnot. Right. So um, like ready, ready player one would be game lit. Cause I don't remember any specific. Correct. Yeah. You're going into the, you're going into the game somehow. Right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I'm writing Legion quests would is my working title for it. And they'll, uh, yeah, they're going to go into a game, but I'm not going to have any kind of stats. Yeah, see, that's oh, always that's been good. my disconnect for writing in that 
that genre because I'm a lifelong gamer. So I get the whole game thing, but I kind of want my fiction in my fiction and my, my numbers in my games. You know, I, I just see the two not merging that well, but I, you know, what do I know? Yeah. Well, Wikipedia Walt um, came in and he gave a good definition. For he- it. Game lit is when the story has game elements, but the character doesn't know they're in a game and lit RPG. The people know they are in a game. Awesome. And then Scott says, unlike us. <laughs> yeah, <I totally didn't. laughs> okay, but what if you we write one where they know they're it's in a game, game, but you're not, but they're not crunching numbers? Is that still lit RPG? Because that's always the way I've heard it defined. Yeah, is that know. we are actually working stats in the game in the story. I know that there's different uh, levels of hardness with game, with the little RPG. So. Some have really serious stats, some have really light stats. Yeah. Corey says, any any recommendations on a lit RPG title to get the feel for the genre? I should ask Blake. You know, I just finished listening to Viridian Gate and loved it. Viridian Gate. The V? Yeah. V, Viridian. And then before I lose it off the the screen, Ken Ward asks, would Royal Road be better uh, demographic-wise than Wattpad for science fiction and fantasy writers? Um, I'd say, yeah, Wattpad is not very good for science fiction fantasy right now. Um, that's Those genres do the worst for me there. So Royal mm. Road, I know, is killing it with lit RPG and game lit um, and other. And I know fantasy, too, is doing awesome there. So I'm sure science fiction has a good option, too. Interesting. I just want to make sure we don't lose track of the term wikipedia walt because yeah. that was uh, i'm actually <laughs> that's a keeper that should keep <laughs> right that's that down like chuck yep. chuck wikipedia walt everybody's got a, everybody's got a you know a, a handle on this show coyote like Matt yeah that checks out well S-O-B. rachel thank you so much for taking the time out of your afternoon and coming and hang out with us degenerates on the show <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me it was awesome it's different from our our Wednesdays, our Wednesdays hangouts, um, but uh, feel like we're we're the best of friends. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, if I missed you in the live chat, I'm sorry. Indigo Dragon, what's up, Walt? Hello, Rick. Scott McGlasson is in the chizat. Uh, Wiki Walt charges nineteen ninety five for the. Wiki <laughs> <laughs> <like> Walt. That. <laughs> I like that. Nice. Guy Anthony DeMarco was here. Tom was here. Lisa was here. Hi, Lisa. Uh, she wrote with me in the office this morning. Who else did I miss? Did I miss anybody else? Patricia. And, uh, t- yeah, that's a Kayleen. good one. Kayleen was here. Degenerates of valor. I like that. <laughs> I like that a a lot. Party, it looks like. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Leo showed up. Then he said, "Back to the salt mines." Bye, Bye, Leo. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think the coffee and concepts should be on tomorrow. I think Walt, if you're still here, Wiki Walt, Wiki Wiki Walt, Wiki Walt, a Wiki Wild Walt. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna vote that one down. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> I think uh, Under the Iceberg is back on Saturday. And I think, I think we're really close to the writer's journey kicking back up in February. I think they took January off and they are coming back uh, in February. And I think that's just a, a week or two off. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, it sounds like Marathon Author is going to continue with James S. Aaron, and then he's also going to be helping out uh, Dean Floyd with Under the Iceberg, so it'll be fun. And uh, there's rumors of a super secret duo coming to the show with a, a super secret new show to our lineup uh, that's actually an old show that started before Keystroke started, or right around uh, the same time. And I'm going to leave it there, vaguely blowing your mind with the epic scale of vagueness that I just laid out. Vague mind blowing is tight. Uh, um, but yeah, that that should be fun. So, anyway, uh, oh, that's what I meant to do. I'm going to make a post in uh, the Facebook group about. Um, uh, your favorite one-liners from the show, and we're gonna make some uh, some merch, some merch with the one-liners on it over the next <clears> couple <throat> of weeks. Coffee mugs and different things like that, because I want to, and it's fun. Oh crap! Coffee <laughs> giveaway. I forgot. Uh, let's Ooh. see. 
Let's see. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I don't do I need know. to bust out my dice. Again? Probably should give it to Tom since you dissed him with the uh, first. You really <laughs> should. <laughs> since you totally dissed him. Yeah. All the right. First loser rule. All right. Uh, <laughs> look, I was going to do it fair and square, uh, but I think Tom gets it. Tom gets it. That's Get, my. Instead of randomized, we're going on merit today. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. <laughs> The most abuse suffered. Uh, it's yeah. coffee. That's right. Merchandising of valor. That's right. Vagueness of valor. Uh, it's not fiber related. Tom says. <laughs> okay. uh, yes, but but put it in the group deal when I put it on Facebook. Otherwise, I forget about it. Uh, Tom, I think I have your address, uh, but PM me on Facebook and I'll get you a, a bag of he said this of valor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Look. I made my decision and I'm sticking with it. I'm not sorry. Okay, that's what we love about you, Josh. Uh, okay, guys. Thank you guys for hang hanging out with us this week. Uh, come back <clears throat> next week. We're going to talk about some reading. We're going to talk about some writing and, of course, everything in between right here on Keystroke Medium. Peace. Later, guys.